With so many events and so much information to share, it could get difficult to keep up. The good news is that you can stay up to date with all things CRC by visiting our website. From information about service times to amazing sermons by Pastor Ad, you can get it all in one place. For more information, visit our website at crcchurch.com. There's one purpose to your life. You have an assignment as a doctor, lawyer, but the purpose of your life is the same purpose of Jesus Christ, to be a soul winner. Everything is about heaven's agenda. I said everything is about heaven's agenda. So we want revival. Then love has to be authentic and real. Because God Himself says, if you cannot love your brother whom you can see, how can you love God who you cannot see? We want to change people. Love them. Love them. You want to ask the revival? Teach your people to love. Love everybody. Love people. People are worthy. People are worthy. Jesus loves people. Revival is spelled L-O-V-E. Love your brother. Love your sister. Love your neighbor. Love South Africa. Love the brother from another church. Represent Christ. Let love be a real thing. Thank you for tuning into our CRC's live broadcast with Pastor Ad Bosov. Your life will never be the same again. Most definitely, TD. Now, family, we would like to ask you to stand to your feet as we get ready for praise and worship. Good morning, CRC. Are you ready to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning? Come on. I wish I could tell you, wish I could describe it, but I can maintain it, can't keep it to myself. Come on, there are enough colors to paint the whole picture, and not enough words to say what I have found. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy, He is merciful and powerful. Who we're talking about? That's our king. Come on. We declare his glory. Give him all the honor. All together worthy. Who we're talking about? That's our king. There's no one for you. Yes, we will adore you. All of this is for you. Who we're talking about? That's my king. Hey, Jesus. 
Mossad and the entire CRC family. Welcome to CRC, the best place to be. Come on, let's give God a hand for the church. Come on, we want to welcome everyone that's visiting for the first time today. You are so welcome. But we also want to welcome all the millions of people that are watching with us. Come on, let's put our hands together as we welcome TBN, TBN Yetu, One Gospel, Praise TV, Facebook Live, YouTube, CRC Online, our radio stations, correctional facilities. Come on, all over the world, we've got people in Russia, Israel, America. We've got in Europe, India, Pakistan, China, Africa, and Iran. Come on, as the word are being preached. We also want to welcome our family in Bloemfontein, Bloemfontein North and Bloemfontein South and all the other CRCs that are part of the service this morning. Family, it's an honor for me to introduce and in a moment we're going to put our hands together as we welcome a son of this house to come and minister the word. Let's put our hands together for Pastor Keegan as he comes and share the word. Amen. Come on CRC, let's give God a praise in this place. Oh, come on, you can give another shout of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, remain standing. I just want to honour our pastor. Pastor, I, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are the hugest leader and hero in my life. I want to honour you and I thank God. I don't take it for granted to stand on this platform today. And come on, family, we have the greatest leader. Amen. Come on, let's just thank God for our pastor. We celebrate him for the gift he is. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. I want you to return to your neighbour and tell them your best days are ahead of you. Come on, let's greet one another. Welcome to Bloom. We welcome all the other churches. We're going to have a great time in the presence of God this morning. I hope you are ready. You may take your seats this morning. Come on, God is getting ready to do miracle after miracle. Hallelujah, open door after open door. Come on, you better get ready for another one is on the way. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, you better get ready. God has not begun yet with you. He's not finished yet. Oh, come on church. Hallelujah. I mean, I'm so excited I spilled water on myself. My message this morning, all for good. Oh, come on. I want to tell you, God is going to work it out all for good for you. All for good. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. The Bible says, And we know that all things work together for the good. Say, for the good. To those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Come on, you're going to help me preach this morning. Say, God is working. Come on, help me. Say, God is working. All things together for my good. Come on, say, my good. Not some things, but all things. I don't know where you find yourself today, my brother and my sister, but I want to tell you that God is working all things together for your good. Not just some things, not just the small things, but everything in your life. God is working it out for your good. I want to tell you, miracle after miracle, open door after open door. I want to tell you that God is working it out for your good. You might think that this God has blessed you so far, my brother and sister, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Ephesians 3.20, God is about to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. God is going to do better. Your best thought, God is going to do better than that. I want to tell you in Psalms 139, oh, I want to tell you God is concerned about your life. God is so interested in your life. The details of your life. 
God is working everything out for your good. Come on, for those who are called according to His purpose. You might sit here this morning, right there in Bloemfontein, maybe in one of the other churches, and you say, Pastor, you talking like, uh, you don't even know what is going on in my life. I want to tell you, God is going to work it out for your good. He's going to work it out. He's going to work out every crevice of your life, every part of your life. He's going to turn it around. He's going to turn that situation around for your good. I tell you, He's working. Even now, as you are sitting, He's working on the other side. He's working on the other side. Oh, He's working. Psalms 139. You have gone into my future and prepared a way. Oh, I thank God that He's gone into my future. Hallelujah. God is making, every, He's making a way. Even as you sit here this morning, He's working. He's working it out. He's orchestrating your comeback. Come on. He's orchestrating your comeback. He's working in your, on your healing, your breakthrough, in your business. Oh, come on. Do you believe it this morning? He's orchestrating your breakthrough. He's working in that marriage. He's working in that relationship. He's working it out for good. Every facet of your life, I want to tell you that God is going to work it out for good. Oh, my brother, you don't stop walking. You don't stop believing. You keep on taking every step because the Bible says that a good man's steps are ordered by God and God is working it out for my good. Oh, come on, say for good. Psalms, Isaiah 45, the Bible says, I will go before you. Thank God He's going before us. He's making the crooked places straight. You might have some crooked places in your life. God is going to straighten it out. You keep on trusting. He's going to straighten it out. Oh, come on there in Bloemfontein. Bloemfontein, come on there in Cape Town, wherever you're seated this morning. He's going to work. The Bible says, I go before you and I make the crooked places straight. I'll break into pieces the, the gates of bronze and cut down the bars of vine. Jeremiah 29. Verse 11, I know the thoughts which I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future. And I hope oh God has a future. You might be sitting here hopeless this morning. I want to tell you that God has a future for you. God has a plan for you. Oh, your life is certain with Jesus Christ. Your life has purpose with Jesus Christ. Come on there in the gallery. You have a future. Oh, come on. God will not leave you nor forsake you. He's with you every step of the way. Oh, come on. Can you say amen? this morning that goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life. I mean, Psalms 139, I love the Scripture. It says, In kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. I thank God that God covers my past. He doesn't just expose my, far, my past. He covers your past. Hallelujah. I don't know what you have done or what you've been through, but your past is forgiven. Your past is gone in the sight of God. You don't have to walk fearful before God because I tell you, He's covered your past by the blood of the Lamb. And I want to tell you that your past is over. Your past cannot harm you. If you are in Christ Jesus, your past is gone. It is forgotten as far as the east is from the west. Now you forget it. Your past cannot harm you. Your past will not define you. Your past can only control what you allow it to control, my brother and sister. I want to tell you this morning that your failure is not fatal with God. He's the God of new beginnings. Hallelujah. He's the God of new beginnings. And I want to tell you, He's the God of another chance. And God is going to do it like that song again and again and again and again. He's going to do it over and over and over in your life. Oh, come on. Can you say amen this morning? So He's with me in my future. Thank God that He sees around the corner. I thank God that I have a God that's leading the way. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows your future and He's working it out for your good. Come on, He's working it out. He's working it out. 
Hallelujah. I thank God that He's working it out. In my, pray, in my past, He covers my sin. And my present, the Bible says His hand is upon me. Oh, come on. His hand is upon me for this time. He's called me for this time. He's called you for this time. His hand is upon you. The Bible says that He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, I'm here to tell you good news today that God will never leave you nor forsake you. That your past is not fatal with God. So your future is in His hands. Your past is protected. Your present, His hand is upon you. Come on, tell your neighbour, say He's working it out for good. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say He's working it out for good. Psalms 139 verse 1. Lord, there, everything you know everything there is to know about me. God knows the, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And He's still madly in love with you. There's nothing that you've done or you can do that can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. He knows you and He's madly in love with you. Oh, He wants you. Hallelujah. He wants you. He wants a deeper relationship with you. Hallelujah. He's going to work it out for your good. Hallelujah. Everything about you. He's, he dances over you. Oh, come on. God dances around you. He lavishes over you. He loves you so much. Bible says, you perceive my every moment of my heart and my soul. You understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, O oh Lord. God is aware of the situation that you're going through. He's aware. You're sitting here. Mama, you don't even know where the next ball's going to come from. God is working it out for good. He's working it out for good. Maybe you're sitting on a contract that's pending. I want to tell you, sir, God is working it out for good. Hallelujah. He's working it out for good. The Bible says He reads my heart like an open book. You know, every word I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know, every step I will take before the journey begins. That's why we can say Psalms 23, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Oh, come on, CRC. He leads me beside still waters. Hallelujah. He restores my soul. He leads me down paths of righteousness. For His name's sake, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Oh, God is working everything out for my good. Oh, you better believe it this morning. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The Bible says you prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Pastor declared that this is a year of overflow. Our cups are going to run over. Oh, our cups are running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How can you say amen? Yeah. He's working it out for good. That's why Philippians 4, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Chill. Tell your neighbor, say chill. He's working it out for good. He's working it out for good. Oh, come on, this is so real. He's working it out for good. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication, let, and thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God, and the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart in Christ Jesus. Now I want to tell you, Paul is at this place. He writes in 2 Corinthians 1.8, we don't want you to be in the dark, friends. Of how hard it was when it all came down in Asia, in South Africa. The economy, maybe the crime, the corruption, the load shedding. It was bad. We didn't think we were going to make it. It felt like we were sent to death row. We thought it was all over for us. But as it turned out, it was the best thing that could have happened. Hallelujah. Instead of trusting in our own strength, instead of trusting in our own words, we were forced to trust God totally. Oh, come on. We who trust in God shall not fail. You shall be like a tree that's planted by the river. You will bear fruit in and out of season. 
Oh, come on. He's working it out for good. I mean, Paul says, it's not a bad idea. Since he's the God that raises the dead. And he did rescue us from certain doom. And he'll do it again. Rescuing us as many times as we need rescuing. Oh, I need a, a lot of rescuing. I don't know about you. I need a lot of rescuing. Maybe you all miracled up, but I need a miracle. I need another one and another one and another one and another one and another one. And I know another one is on the way. Hallelujah. Another one. Says, and your prayers are part of the rescue operation. You don't stop praying, mama. You don't stop praying, sir. Your prayers are part of the rescue situation. Hallelujah. The rescue operation for God to work it out for good. I was thinking, you know, it's like God is in heaven and he's almost like Drikas. I'm not saying he's like Drikas, but he's saying, Alle weet wat ons weet nie. I am with him all the way. I'm with you every step of the way. Come on, hallelujah. When the devil comes up, you say, He doesn't know what we know. Good things are heading my way. God is going to work this thing out for good. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, get a bounce in your step that God is working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. Oh, come on then, Blimpente. So number one, God is working on your rescue plan. Instead of trusting in your own strengths or wits to get out of it, we were forced to trust in God. I thought of Joseph. Joseph is in this pit. Brothers trying to kill him. But while he's in the pit, God is working on his rescue plan. God is sending Ishmaelites while you're in the pit. God is sending your rescue party on the way. He's working it out for good. Hallelujah. You're sitting in a pit, but God's saying, Hey, I'm coming. I'm coming to rescue you. I'm coming to break you out of that situation. I'm on your side. Hallelujah. Lands up in part of his house, gets accused. God said, not God said, they sent him to prison. You know, sometimes prison is part of your rescue plan God let me out no it's part of the rescue plan sometimes it's frustrating but God is working in that prison amongst all the rats amongst all the things you used to push your nose up at God says I'm working I'm working I'm working. And we know this man lands up in the palace. And as he lands up in the palace as prime minister in Genesis 50, the Bible says Joseph speaking to his brothers and he says, don't be afraid. Now I want to tell you, I'm in the place of God. What a place to be in when you, when, you, when you say like, God, don't get me out of this place. I don't want to be set free because I can see the growth. I can see the character. I can see how I've expanded. I'm going to tell you, God, I'm not even praying to get you out. Uh, get me out. I'm going to step out of this place. I thank you for the pit that I was in. And not that we're praying for, for trials and tribulations, but we thank God for the pit and the palace because now you're in the place of God. Oh, Come on. And Joseph says, I'm in the place of God. And I'm better than I was before. And he said, what you meant for evil, God has turned and meant for my good in order to save many alive. Hallelujah. Think of Daniel. Daniel was, had an excellent spirit. He distinguished himself above all the governors and all the satraps. Bible says, the king put him and sent him over the whole realm. The governors tried to find out, find something against him. They couldn't. He was righteous and they thought we have to set a trap for him. The only way we can get him is to accuse him with things pertaining to his God. And they come to the king and they say, well, let's set up a statue of you, King Darius. A royal statue and make a firm degree that whoever petitions God or man in 30 days except you, King Darius, will be thrown in the lion's den. And we know that Daniel wasn't going to worship anything else like you this morning. We're not going to bow down because of the pressure. We're not going to bow down because of what we are facing. We know that God is working this thing out for good. Even although they set a trap out for you, even although they come against you, I tell you that God is working it out for good. Hallelujah. They set Him up. We know that eventually 
They tell the king, hey, he's been worshipping another God except you. And he has to be thrown in prison. And the Bible says in Daniel chapter 6, and the king heard these words and it displeased him. And he set his heart to deliver him. I mean, he labored till the going down of the sun. Think of it, a evil man, a wicked man, a non-Christian was trying to help him. I want to tell you, God is going to get people that you didn't even think to help you on your journey, to help you break free. A king, a wicked person, God will use. Amen, the Bible says, he used the king. And the king labored to get him out, but it didn't work. And these men approached the king and said, now, now, king, you know the law of the Medes and the Persians, the decree and the statue stands. It is established. You cannot change it. And so the king commanded the, team, the tomb to be closed. Nor the tomb to be closed, the rock, the lines then to be closed. And listen to what the king says. But the king said to Daniel, your God who you serve daily. Even a heathen man could recognize that the God that you serve is going to work this thing out for good. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Even your boss who doesn't like you says, the God that you trust, the God that you know is going to work it out for good. I want to tell you, He's going to work it out for good. Hallelujah. He says, the God that you serve will deliver you out of the mouth of the lion. And the king went to his palace and spend the night fasting. Think of it. He's not saved. Yeah, the boss, he's praying for you. Thank you for the increase. Father, I pray for increase. I pray for breakthrough. Father, I pray favor upon your life. I mean, it's contrary. That's how God just works it out for your good. You just got to stand and stand on his principles. And the king comes in the morning after crying and praying the whole night and says, Daniel, Servant of the living God, was your God able to save you from the mouth of the lion? And Daniel said, hey, I want to tell you, King, the angel of the Lord has shut the, the lion's den because he worked on my rescue plan and he, he rescued me and he'll rescue me again and again and again and again and again and again. Those three, three, three Hebrew boys, their rescue never came outside the fire. It came in the fire. I tell you, your rescue plan is on the way. In the midst of the fire, the fourth man in the fire. Come on, in the name of Jesus, the fourth man in the fire is with you. Hallelujah, God is working it out for good. He's gonna rescue you. Oh, I tell you, He's gonna rescue you over and over and over again. Like Paul and Silas were facing imminent death in that prison. Come on, the rescue plan. That prison doors began to shake. Hallelujah. The foundation doors, the foundations began to shake. Hallelujah. Because God is working on the other side of your obedience. He's working it out for good. Come on there in Bloemfontein. Come on there in the gallery. Oh, come on there in Kimberley, wherever you find yourself this morning. And I want to say that He's already conducted the greatest rescue mission of all time. Colossians 1.13. He's rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of light. I want to tell you, if God could rescue your soul from hell, surely He can rescue, from the, rescue you from the situation you are facing in. If He could save us from hell, surely He will break through. Surely He will come through. Surely He will do it again and again and again. Oh, come on, another open door. Another miracle is on its way. Oh, can you say amen this morning? God will rescue you. Number two, your rescue plan is on the way. Number two, God's, God will rescue you, as, rescue you as many times as you need rescuing. As many times. 1 Samuel 17, moreover, David said, the Lord has delivered me from the paw of the lion. He's delivered me from the paw of the bear. And He will deliver me again from the hand of this Philistine. And He will do it again and again. Maybe you're sitting in this place. I don't know how many times you failed. I don't know how many times you have 
made mistakes but I want to tell you God will rescue you again and again and again that doesn't give us a license to sin that's just God's grace that just comes and mercy that just comes and says I will do it again I will save you again I will touch you again I will renew things again I will change things again and again oh come on God is working it out for your good can you say amen so so many people assume that God is an angry man with a stick waiting to get you, looking at your sin with a smirk to pass pass judgment. No, that's exactly the opposite. Exactly the opposite. He's not smirking at you. He's a loving God. He's a loving, merciful God that is kind and forgiving and longs to have a relationship with you. He's a loving Father that wants to get you know, to get to know you more. He wants to guide you and teach you through His Holy Spirit. I want to tell you that this love of God is extravagant. Hallelujah. This love of God is far reaching. This love of God will fetch you wherever you find yourself. I want to tell you this morning that this love of God, this love of God will never leave you where He found you. This love of God will fetch you. I don't know where you are this morning, but I'll tell you that He sent a rescue boat out for you and He's looking for you with His love. He's searching for you with His love. He'll find you. I thank God for His goodness and His mercy that He could find someone like me. I think of my life, how I've been rescued so many times. The darkest moments in my life, sitting in my room, I'll never forget a day I sat on my bed, literally with a knife. I haven't told a lot of people. I never, I forget it. I never forget it in this hostel. No food. Trust in God. Find myself in a pit, been praying, been fasting. I'm like, God, where are you? And I didn't know what was on the other side. I didn't know what was on the other side. And at that moment, I maybe felt like quitting. I stood there with that knife and I said, man, I can just fall on myself and it can be over. I can save myself some trouble. But God said, no. I'm working this thing out for good. You just hold on. Put aside your shame. Put aside the pain. Put aside the hurt. I'm going to work this thing out. I'm going to work it out. Maybe you busy with a business and things have crashed. But I want to tell you, sir, you cannot quit now. You cannot quit. You cannot give up. God is working it out for good. He'll fetch you. He'll find you. This God that is so involved in the details of our lives. He loves every part of you. He's madly in love with you. Just looking and waiting. I'll fix that. I'll fix that marriage. I'll fetch that son. That's on drugs. I'm going to work this thing out. I want to work it out. Please listen to me this morning. Come on, church. You get it, settle it in your heart that He's working it out for good. He's working it out for my good. Come on, tell yourself this morning. He's working it out for my good. He's working it out for my good. That peace that surpasses all understanding that comes. This God loves you with an extravagant love. It's a love that's far reaching, it's unconditional. It's relentless in its pursuit. It's not based on what you do or what you did or what you're going to do. You cannot earn it. You cannot buy it. It's undeserving. It's a love that has been freely given through through His Son, Jesus Christ. This God doesn't love you or God does not love or doesn't do love. God is love. I'll say that again. God doesn't do love. God is love. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Think of it, Romans 8, 5 verse 8. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. While we were in our sin, God said, I'm working it out for your good. 
You were not even saved and God worked it all for your good on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. You were in your sin. You were in the club. You were in the pub. You were wherever you were finding yourself. And He died on the cross of Calvary and said, I'm working it out for you, for you, for you, for you. I'm working it out for your good. You may not see it right now, but I tell you things are going to change and things are going to turn. I'm working it out for your good. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. God didn't just love us in word. You know, He's working it out for our good because He loves us. I tell you, He'll rescue you over and over and over again. Over and over again. God didn't just love you in word. He loved you in action. And He displayed it 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. I pray this morning that you may see this love that He has for you. That you may change your image of God. That you may have the right picture of Him. I'm not saying you don't. A picture of a God that is working it out for my good. When you start seeing how God is working it out for good, you start having mercy with other people. You start extending the hand of generosity. You begin to see people and say, hey, God is working it out for good. Even when somebody spitefully uses you and abuses you, that means you can say, I see better. I see something better in you. And I know God is going to work this situation out for good. And then we can, can extend grace and mercy to people because we know the image of God. And we can look at people through the eyes of God. And we begin to see the good in people. And we begin to encourage people as you're at the grocery store. Maybe as you're driving around the world, around, around town. And you see somebody at the robot and you just tell him, God is working it out for good. Yes, we must bless people and help them and extend the arm of generosity. But I tell you, a word of encouragement can pull somebody out of a hole. I know a coach that spoke to me that said, you are going to make it. You are good. You are going to be the best. And I tell you, God sees the best in you. You see the best in other people. Oh, come on then, Bloemfontein. Oh, come on, jump to your feet and give God praise in this place. God is on a rescue mission. Even in this room. He's on a rescue mission. Wanting to rescue you with whatever you're going through. Just drawing you closer to Him. Closer. I'll take you further. Some of you may be in ankle deep water. Come on deeper. Come on to need deep water. You know, in those waters when we have control, He's going to leave you because you're going to rescue yourself. You know, if you need deep water, we can, we can move, but we're still in control. Waste deep water, we go a bit with God, but we're still in control. God wants to get you to a place where you're totally submerged. Where you can work this thing out for good. Where you can trust Him and believe Him. You know, your picture of God is so important. Your image of Him. Because it determines how you love God, determines your relationship with God, how you see God, how you see yourself, how you see others, how you relate to others. It determines your faith in God, determines how you surrender to God, it determines your trust in God, it determines your belief in God, your time and your intimacy, how you see God. And I tell you that God is working all things out for your good this morning. I don't know where you find yourself this morning, my, my brother and my sister. I know that this God that we serve is a God of mercy and He's chasing you down. And I tell you like that song, He's going to open another door. He's going to open another way. He's going to make another opportunity. I tell you this morning, I want to encourage you this morning. I mean, even on this long weekend, I mean, God is working all things out for your good. Oh, come on this morning. Hallelujah. He's working it out for your good. Come on there on television. He's working it out. Oh, come on. Do you believe it this morning? 
Do you believe it this morning? Hallelujah. Even in this place, it's like, I can feel the Holy Spirit. I want to stop here. Because I can feel. He's reaching out to you. They're in Bloemfontein. Throwing a lifeline. Calling you. Saying, I'll rescue you again. I'm working this thing out for good. Things are going to change. Things are going to work out. I don't know where you find yourself. But He's going to work it out for your good. Even as you sit in this place, I want to tell you, as you sit in this place, He's throwing out a lifeline for you, my brother, for you, my sister. And as your heads are bowed, eyes are closed, the presence of God all in this place. Then Bloemfontein, He's here in this place and he want to work, He's working it out for good. Say, Pastor, this morning I can feel the tugging of the Holy Spirit upon my heart. And He's calling you. He's calling you. That's you. You say, I want to give my heart to Jesus Christ. I want you right now to lift up your hand. Right now in this place, say, I want to give my heart to Jesus Christ. Come on, lift up your hand in this place. Come on, He's calling you. He's sending a lifeline out to you. Come right there on television. Lift up your hand. Maybe you're sitting on your couch, on your chair. He's here, sending a lifeline to you, saying, I'm going to work this thing out for good. Might find yourself in a dry place. It's going to work it out for your good. Maybe in this place and as life, maybe time has happened, you've moved away from Him. But this morning, you can feel He's calling you back. I want to tell you, He wants to rescue you again. Again and again and again. And He's here to rescue you. If that's you, say, Pastor, I want to come back home. Lift up your hand this morning. I want to pray for you. Come on, right there in the gallery. I want to pray for you. Come on, He's rescuing you. Amen. All you have to do is grab the lifeline. Grab the lifeline. Come on. In Jesus' name, lift up your hand. I want to pray for you. If that's you, lift up your hand. Come on, in all our churches. Lift up your hand. Many hands going up everywhere. Lift up your hand. Come on, right there. On television, lift up your hand where you find yourself. He loves you, He cares for you. Maybe in this place, you're not even certain where you would go in the next few minutes, but I want to tell you, you can be certain because the rescue plan is already complete through Jesus Christ. All you have to do is say yes. If that's you in this place, lift up your hand. I want to pray for you right now. Come lift up your hand. Thank you, thank you. Many hands going up everywhere. Lift up your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right there on television, lift up your hand. I want to ask you, can we all stand in this place? And if you lifted up your hand, maybe through an encouragement of a friend or a family member, you would come down to this altar. But I want to ask you right now, take your Bible and your personal belongings and come down to this altar. Come on right now in Jesus' Name. Come, 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 come. Come. He loves you. Come. Come. Come right there on television. You can stand in your living room and give your heart to Jesus. Oh, come. Come on, He loves you. Come on, in Kimberley, in Porch, in Cape Town, in Bloemfontein. Come to the altar. Right there in Port Elizabeth, wherever you find yourself, come. Come this morning. Oh, come on, my brother, come, come. He'll rescue you again and again and again and again. Come on, we'll wait for you. Come. Come on, let's clap CRC as they come.
Come on, we'll wait for you. Come on, Jesus loves you. Come on, Leon, social media, we love you. Connect with us, jump on us, on our social media. God loves you as you give your heart to Jesus Christ, amen. Come on, let's just keep on clapping as they come. Come on, he's waiting for you. Come on, sir. Come there in Bloemfontein. Amen. Amen. You know, I want to tell you all here in this at the altars, wherever you find yourself in South Africa, God is working it out for your good. Every step of the way, He's with you. And He loves you. And He cares for you. This morning, I want you to put your hand on your heart and pray this prayer. And pray it with all of your heart. Come on, in all our campuses, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that You are the Son of God that you died for my sins, that God raised you from the dead. I give you my life. I give you my heart right now. I receive your Holy Spirit to guide me and lead me into all truth. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on. He loves you. And there's a great plan for your life. We want to pray with you in all our campuses and give you a Bible, a booklet, and help you on your journey. So in all the other campuses, can you please go with the pastors on the ground? And here in Pretoria, can you turn to my right, your left, as we go to, with the altar workers, and they're going to pray with you. Come on, let's clap our hands. CRC. Come on, family, let's continue to clap our hands this morning. For every person that came. Come on, let's also put our hands together for Pastor Keegan and thank him for the word this morning. Hey Amen, family. Can you be so kind just to take your seats? We're going to release all the other churches that they can continue with their own offering. For the offering this morning, as we go into the season of Passover, and next week we can have our great production. The Word tells us in Genesis 8.22, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. We find in Genesis 22 certain kingdom principles. The reality is, if we believe it or not, it doesn't change the principles. We need to decide whether we will use it to fulfill the will of God in our lives. In the same way God said to Abraham in Genesis 12, that I've blessed you to be a blessing. So it still remains our choice what we would like to decide. We find that God's blessing is connected and attached to His purpose. The purpose as we find in Luke 4, verse 18 to 19. And one of them is to preach the gospel to the poor. So we find that God's principles doesn't change. And the most important thing that we can do is we can decide, will we use it to use it for the kingdom of God or will it just be a thing that we read and never make our own? Even though the gospel is free, to get it to people is not free. And that is why we give. We give to come and have an opportunity to share like we are doing in Iran. That lives are being changed because of people's generosity. 
The Word tells us in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 67 out of the Message Translation. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each one of you to take plenty of time and think it over and make up your mind what you will give. That you will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when a giver delights in his giving. So Paul makes it very known here and he says that we need to take time. And we want to do exactly the same. You need to take the time that you can come to the conclusion that is honoring God of your finances part of who you are or not. Because the Word of God doesn't change. Doesn't matter our opinions about it, the way we feel about it. But it's still a principle that we can either use to see God's kingdom expand. In the end, we need to make up our minds according to the importance of our attitude towards money and the kingdom of God. In a moment, we're going to ask, please, that you remain seated. Please, we don't ask that anyone walk around. The ushers are going to rise in a moment and take up the offering as we listen to anointed item.
angels bow, the creatures cry, saints and angels glorify, the anthem echoes day and night, worthy, eyes like fire, hair like wool, voice like baby waters roll, as you said the Amen, family. Let's give the band a hand this morning. Please be asked that we do not leave the church now. We're going to do the last part of the baby dedications. So can we ask all the parents that will be dedicating their children today, if you can be so kind just to come and join us here in the front. If you would love to dedicate your children, please be so kind to go to the information desk. It is usually on the last Sunday of the month. So please, you're welcome to go there. They'll give you all the dates. You can book it accordingly. And then we will make sure that you are part of that important date. So as the families come, the grandparents, those that would love to come with you, welcome to join them. This is always so amazing to see so many children. It's always a huge blessing for us to be part of this wonderful day. I think our pastor gave us so many teachings over the years of the importance of our children. But I think the one that always stuck with me is to be intentional in every single thing that you do. The word tells us that children are a gift from the Lord. In Proverbs 22 verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go, teaching him to see God's wisdom and will for his abilities and talents. Even when he's old, he will not depart from it. So we see here that God says we need to teach them. By teaching them, we need to be intentional. And what you are doing today is being intentional, bringing them in front of the whole congregation, making a vow that you will bring up them in the ways of God. Isaiah 55, 59 verse 21 says the following, as for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I've put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord, for this time and forevermore. So God is saying that the same spirit that you carry, it will go upon your children's children as well. And that is why it's so important as parents that we make a vow today that we say that we will do whatever we can, that we will lift up our children in the ways of God. We will raise them and be part of it. And that's the amazing thing of every single one of you that came to the front. Because as a congregation, we will keep you accountable. If we don't see you, we're going to ask you, where are you? Because it's important that we make a vow. So please, if you can be so kind, family in the front, I'm going to lead you in a vow. And as parents, you're going to make the vow now to God. And we're going to trust together. And as you lay your hands as a family on the children, I'm going to lead you and you're going to say the following vow, making a vow to God over these children. So please be so kind to follow me. Say, Father, today as parents, we want to thank you for the gift you have entrusted us with. We commit ourselves to raise our children in the ways of God and teach them to love you to obey your word and to serve your purpose. Help us to be an example to them. Give us wisdom and understanding to train them in the ways of God, how to serve you with everything they have. This is our promise today. In Jesus' name, amen. We're just going to pray for them, family. And as you've made this vow, it is important that all of us will keep you accountable. Family, as we stretch forth our hands, Father, we just come. And as every single parent made a vow today, that they will bring up their children in the ways of God, 
that Lord, we ask you to give them wisdom beyond the years, Father, that they will have an understanding of how to raise every single child according to their abilities and according to how you've made them, to their gifts and their talents. Father, we thank you that you'll lead them, that you'll guide them, every parent, every grandparent, every family member that are attached to these children, that every time they lay hands, that they will impart grace, mercy, understanding, that your spirit will be upon these children, Father, and on their children's children. We honor and we thank you, Father, for what you started in these people and in this couple's father and in these children as we bless you and honor you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, family. If you can be so kind, everyone standing in the front, please be so kind to turn around and show the congregation. Come on, your gifts. Come on, everyone want to see the gifts that God has given you. Amen, family. Can I just encourage every one of you that's standing in the front, please remember when you leave, go to the information desk, straight through the back doors, you'll find a certificate at the information desk as we take our seats and turn our attention to the screen for those week's announcements. there, I'm Sidi. And I'm Anne. This coming Friday, we will be having a Good Friday service. And then on Sunday, we have our amazing Passover production that you don't want to miss. So invite your world. one purpose to your life. You have an assignment as a doctor, lawyer, but the purpose of your life is the same purpose of Jesus Christ, to be a soul winner. Everything is about heaven's agenda. I said everything is about heaven's agenda. So we want revival. Then love has to be authentic and real. Because God Himself says, if you cannot love your brother whom you can see, how can you love God who you cannot see? We want to change people. Love them. Love them. Do you want to ask of revival? Teach your people to love. Love everybody. Love people. People are worthy. People are worthy. Jesus loves people. Revival is spelled L O V E. Love your brother, love your sister, love your neighbor, love South Africa, love the brother from another church. Represent Christ. Let love be a real thing. Come on, amen, family. How do we love people? By inviting them to church. Come on, and as we heard next week, Sunday, we've got our production. The service on Friday morning is nine o'clock, please. So those that will be joining us on Friday morning, nine o'clock in auditorium, we're gonna be gathering together. Please make sure that you invite someone to church. We heard this morning that love is everything. And two of the most important dates to any religious person is Christmas and over this time, over Passover. So it is important that we use this. They still say that 85% of people are willing to come to church if someone took the time to physically invite them. So come on, let's be the hand and the feet of Jesus. Then if you'd love to join us on Tuesday for our spiritual gifts, Tuesday night, seven o'clock in the chapel, we will be meeting together. And remember the Beautiful Ashes Project. That is a project where you can still get involved. We can still drop donations weekly as it goes out and we are changing lives wherever we go. Family, let's just close together. 
Father, we thank you for the grace that's upon our lives. Father, we thank you for the honor that we have to be in this church. We thank you for the leadership of this church. Father, we thank you for every person that got saved this morning and everyone that gave into the offering. We bless and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday, family. Remember six o'clock tonight.